بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته thank you so much for joining us for MCC's new Muslim Ramadan stories series uh, today alhamdulillah we have sister Heather with us alaikum sister Heather alaikum salam Thank you so much for joining us uh, and sharing your story with us. It's uh, definitely an honor, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Um, can you tell us more about yourself or a little bit about yourself? Uh, how long have you been Muslim? Background info? Wonderful. Thank you for the invitation to speak this evening. I'm excited to be here and I really appreciate it. Alhamdulillah. So for me, um, new, a uh, new convert, I was invited to recite the Shahada by my now husband, but at the time a new Muslim friend back in September. So so many things have changed for me very, very quickly. Uh, but after reading the Quran uh, from cover to cover, I realized that I am on the right path and home, and this will be, uh, is kind of the beginning for me of a journey that I look so very forward to. And I will add to that that most recently I married this very wonderful person who is the answer to prayers um, that had, who is Muslim and had invited me to be Muslim, uh, his Muslim wife, uh, just recently on the 17th of March in Mashallah. Qatar. Mashallah. Congratulations. <laughs> So there's been so much going on. <coughs> mashallah, mashallah, may Allah bless your marriage. I mean, um, can you tell us more about your journey to Islam um, and your, you know, just basically a kind of a little bit more about the things that led up to that point where you felt in your heart that you believed and you wanted to take that step? Absolutely. So for me, my journey was um, I was born to a single mother under dire circumstances and um, was raised without religion. Um, there was no conformity, um, freedoms, unimaginable freedoms and things that uh, probably exposed me to um, ways that were certainly not healthy. But um, in reflection, I realized my mom was doing the best she could. And so in raising me in a very non-religious environment, um, I had just kind of lived my life a certain way up to a point where um, I was in my, um, in a situation where I lost a loved one who was most dear to me. And it, was the worst experience. I was, for the first time in my entire life, most devastated, just broken. And that set me on a path to start exploring uh, deeper meaning. Why am I here? Why is Why do these things happen? And um, I stumbled upon a Buddhist monastery and was invited to attend and uh, studied for several months and um, met the most wonderful Buddhist monks and nuns and uh, learned prostration and prayer and meditation and how to more discipline my mind. And I still have in memory some of the wonderful mantras. Uh, however, there was still something that I was searching for. And a beloved family member had suggested I pray, and it was a Christian prayer that was brought to my attention. And so I began my journey of prayer and ultimately ended up reading the Bible cover to cover, then decided on baptism and started attending church. But again, I was just really like, there has to be more to this. And I had so many questions, and I 
I felt a connection, but I was, I was really, to a degree, feeling like I didn't fit. Mm -hmm. And I had experienced, um, within the past couple of years, uh, some additional deeply felt very hard hitting losses. And I was once again faced with why are these things happening? And, you know, I feel like I'm a little more spiritual, but I just turned it inward and really was in a certain way more lost. And the questions that I had, I wasn't finding answers to. And this wonderful person just kind of stumbled my way. And um, from that point, there were conversations that opened up. And as he began speaking to me about Islam, I realized I had so many questions. And then they just flowed from me very naturally. And when he was talking about Muslims, and I did I know Muslims? And I hadn't ever met a Muslim that had ever spoke to me about being Muslim or Islam, so I knew virtually nothing. The only thing that I could relate to was while I was reading the Bible, there were parts of the Old Testament and scriptures where it was talking about prayer and prostration, and um, it was obviously I identified once reading the Quran that... um, sequence of events obviously are very well accounted for and um, had some understanding of who the prophets were and and felt a real deep connection to the Quran and so that I had this person readily available to ask questions to and to answer my questions was certainly most beneficial. I was truly grateful and then of course set upon the journey of learning um, Salah and I'm still struggling because the Arabic language does not come easy for me. I think I'm one of those people that I've tried learning other languages and I learn a little and I forget more than I've learned and um, I do realize that this is going to be a very long journey and I just have to be gentle with myself. I tend to be a little bit harder on myself and sort of expect myself to do everything to a measure of not necessarily perfection, but in order and to make sure everything makes sense and has some deep meaning and that I'm getting it. And so maybe I have a tendency to overthink things, but this is one thing that just feels so natural to me to a point that When I discovered by doing a DNA ancestry test that I actually have ancestry from Tunisia, a Muslim country, so I'm realizing, oh, this makes perfect sense. MashaAllah, that's an amazing story, MashaAllah. Um, Allah brings us to Islam in in such beautiful ways, MashaAllah, and that's definitely the case for you, MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Okay, so this, so you just took Shahada, MashaAllah, just recently. So this is going to be your first Ramadan. Yes. And Ramadan is just a couple of days um, from from now. So how are you feeling as we approach the Blessed Month? Candidly, um, I have moments of nervousness and anxiousness. However, I'm realizing that my approach is just really with a high degree of humility. I know so little, and I'm really putting effort into wanting to learn, but wanting to learn so that I can value um, at the highest level the blessings and the benefits and the rewards and knowing that it's going to come with challenges. I'm embracing those challenges that it's going to come with difficulties. I'm embracing those on the front end, realizing that they will shape me and mold me into a better Muslim woman, a better Muslim wife, a better Muslim sister within the community. So I'm, I'm grateful and I'm, so very dependent upon Allah to strengthen me and fortify me and bring the wisdom to me and bring good people to me that have experience and wisdom and and I'm 
Alhamdulillah, I'm really genuinely just feeling so grateful. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And mashallah, I really appreciate that you're, um, you're offering yourself some, you know, self-compassion and trying to just take it easy and put it in Allah's hands, mashallah. Yes. So do you, are you feeling apprehensive at all about any particular aspects or are you going to, do you feel like you're going to just take it a day at a time? <laughs> Exactly. It's probably really going to be an hour at a time. I am fasting is something I, I've always kind of had a tendency to not do the things that I should do. So never am I ever eating at the same time. Sometimes I don't eat until two in the afternoon, and sometimes I don't eat at all in the evening. And um, I was actually just joking with a family member and and saying that um, I realized that the fasting will be beneficial because I've struggled with framing what I should be doing in terms of food. There have been things that for the longest time I've overindulged in, and as a consequence of that, it's um, it certainly had an impact on health. And so I'm wanting to just really reevaluate my thinking about what I put in my body and how often and that there are so many people that struggle for just the basics so I'm feeling a certain amount of responsibility to make sure that I don't overindulge so that more can be shared with others. It's a sensitivity that I have more now thinking about the my intention going in, which is just to really value all parts of Ramadan and that the fasting, even though I know it's not going to be easy, uh, I will take it hour by hour, day by day and do my very best and um, I haven't even really looked into like what the consequences are if I break fast or if I don't do things the right way. I'm just really trying to focus on what I should do and just the leanings on Allah to strengthen me and ensure that I'll do what I'm supposed to and find the right guidance and counsel. Inshallah, inshallah, it'll all inshallah. fall into place, and um, <clears throat> you'll you'll figure it out. It's uh, it's definitely a journey, like you you mentioned earlier. That you know, it's a lifelong journey. So, inshallah, with each Ramadan, we learn more and um, grow inshallah. more. Inshallah, <clears throat> and also, like you mentioned, uh, Subhanallah, it really is a great time to you know be more mindful about what we're eating and how we're eating. Um, mashallah, it's it's really it's like such a <clears throat> multifaceted benefit during yes. Islam, uh, during Islam, during Ramadan, mm -hmm. mashallah, subhanallah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, non-Muslim family members and friends, and um, do you, do you think, do you foresee um, interactions with them during Ramadan, and um, how do you think that's going to go? I actually just received a phone call from a sister who lives in New York. Uh, she's coming to California for a week with her boyfriend and has invited me to a night of comedy next Wednesday. And she had mentioned going to dinner before, and I s explained to her that this is Ramadan, so there's fasting from the early morning prayer until a later evening prayer and that dinner will be out for me. Um, and so it was very sweet. It was a touching moment because she immediately said, well, let's adjust. We'll eat when you are able to eat. And um, I realized that even though my family doesn't fully understand uh, this change in my life and th they have questions and when I answer um, I'm trying to be most patient and uh, not impart 
more than what I actually know. I'm not trying to overstep boundaries because I realize I'm so new and that this is all still so very new to me, but that I have read the Quran and so I'm able to just draw from some of what I've learned. And when I'm talking with them about Prophet Muhammad's teachings, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his teachings or um, Mother Aisha and I am able to share with absolute joy and enthusiasm that I'm learning and these things, though they're very new to me, are such an important part of my journey and my growth and that it is in many ways creating in me a much better person and so I will be a much better sister a much better daughter um, and just all I in inshallah um, a much better well-rounded human being and so I'm actually excited more and more to be sharing as I know best how to explain um, what it is to be Muslim and to explain more about Islam and even though I feel very limited in my knowledge I can certainly share at least the basics of my own experience and the wonderful people that I've met and the joy that I'm experiencing and the love that I feel and that is being shared with me, which is unparalleled to any other experience in my lifetime. So I want to share these things. SubhanAllah, mashallah. And what a blessing that they're open and open-minded and being you know, supportive. Yes. Mashallah, inshallah, they will continue inshallah. to be that way. And inshallah, may Allah just uh, increase the love and care between you and all of your um, family members. Inshallah. Okay. So, um, since this is your first Ramadan again, yes. um, and I think like anyway, as each Ramadan passes by or as we, each Ramadan approaches, we would want to set goals for ourselves. But uh, this is your first Ramadan, so do you have any goals in mind and, you know, what is the most, what is the, what, what are you looking forward to most? this Ramadan? Such a good question. I'm still putting the pieces together, but one goal is that I really do, so I'm almost finished reading the Quran for the second time, and I want very much to be able to complete it a third time for deeper understanding, and I feel that the impact that it'll have in terms of hopefully, inshallah, finding some deeper meanings and moving more towards um, more self-discipline and, and knowledge that will fortify me going forward uh, as I delve deeper into more of the responsibilities of upholding the five pillars of Islam and, and embarking on studies and really trying and um, inshallah hoping that the Arabic language uh, takes hold um, so reading the Quran and prayer is high highest on my list of priorities learning dua so I feel like I will be utilizing this time as much as possible I think the bigger challenge is that uh, I work Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30, so I know trying to, find, trying to do all of this and balance it with measured discipline is going to come with challenges, and that's maybe where I feel like I could potentially stumble if I miss a prayer and if I... Um, if, I'm still struggling after a week or two with certain words or um, parts of prayer. Am I going to feel disappointment within myself or, you know, how will I deal with that as I go? But, you know, just kind of keeping, keeping everything as simple as possible, yeah, mashallah. manageable. Mashallah, inshallah, inshallah. May Allah make, make it easy for you and uh, give you success in all of your efforts. Mashallah, I think I read today a 
by one of our teachers uh, a post about uh, making goals during Ramadan and um, making them meaningful and I think it was consistent uh -huh. or making them practical. So mashallah, it sounds like you have that covered, like your, you know, your, your goals are mashallah very meaningful and important to you. And then, you know, you have some consistent or, you know, goals that you can try to make consistent for yourself, inshallah. inshallah. So, inshallah. Okay, so fun stuff, inshallah. You know, Ramadan, um, for people who have grown up as Muslims, they have a lot of stuff that is brings, you know, is brings nostalgia for them, whether it's food or just, you know, gatherings with family. There's a lot of things that just for, like, with us maybe, you know, uh, there's different holidays that have nostalgic memories for us. Um, Eid, uh, Ramadan and Eid are like that for born Muslims. But since we weren't born Muslim, we have the opportunity to make traditions and um, build things in our in our Ramadans that uh, will be nostalgic for us in the future. So have you thought about that? Have you thought of um, any, any traditions that you want to build for you and your family or start for you and your family, Chola? The one thing that most stands out for me in terms of what I find I want to accomplish, or it's kind of part goal, but I want to develop this into a tradition during Ramadan, is where I have kind of a minimalistic approach. I mean, not truly, but, um, or as much as I would like to commit to, but a pretty minimalistic approach to life in general. I want to basically kind of go through things that I've accumulated over time that might not have the value and donate and do things for others that if I think something that I have might be of benefit to someone else who may value it more, um, be willing to part with that. And, um, and that's kind of part one of the second part for me, which is really to be more available to help others. I feel like that's kind of the one thing that will really allow me to experience the benefits of being a good Muslim woman in a sense because I am right now, my husband lives in another country and I'm here alone and my family lives in other states. So outside of work, it's just me at home. And to become a more community oriented, more community involved and to really build within the community, but first by um, building relationships with others through giving and giving of myself, of my time, of my efforts, any talents that I may have uh, is something I most look forward to. So I hope to translate that into tradition somehow. Sister Heather, that's an amazing answer, mashallah. How beautiful. Um, I can't imagine that, you know, mashallah, that's just really such a beautiful and humble uh, tradition that you want to start for yourself. And again, may Allah give you a success in your efforts. I can tell you that MCC always needs volunteers during Ramadan, so you're always welcome Wonderful. here, alhamdulillah. I will volunteer. Um, mashallah. That's really beautiful. Um, okay, so last question. As a new convert, what would you like to share with the community viewers who are watching this outside of the MCC community? And uh, how do you feel we could support new converts better? Great question. Um, I most would like to uh, really develop relationships within the Muslim community. And I feel 
alhamdulillah, it's such an incredible blessing to have been guided and and come into contact with so many wonderful people at MCC. Um, when I was first reaching out to masjids in the area, it was because I needed the Shahada certificate to go to the country to marry my husband. And um, I hadn't yet really felt comfortable um, knowing that I wasn't so well-rounded in prayer and um, to go to the mosque to pray. And so I'm still at a point where uh, I have so much more work to do, but I'm so willing to learn. And so any sisters who have knowledge, wisdom, experience that they are willing to impart, I am eager to listen, to learn, to share, and um, I'm very excited to be among such a good community of people, and the resources here are absolutely fantastic, and I will say that to my experience, it was a phone call and an email, and the response was so immediate, and Brother Muneer um, just orchestrated everything so split second, literally just dropping everything to accommodate me. And I was thinking, who does that? Wherever in the world do these things happen? So there's such a special place in my heart for um, you and Brother Manier and um, Sister Jose. Jose, yeah. Um, alhamdulillah, I feel so incredibly blessed to um, be uh, invited here and to be sharing uh, in the, this experience, in my experience with others, but also um, be able to be a part of something so much bigger. And I'm truly grateful for this. And in terms of, I think you guys do so well already. Um, drawing resources and garnering resources for new converts. I've not yet tapped into but been offered um, uh, so many wonderful resources. So that's where it'll be picking up for me. And I will definitely be doing a deep dive into these wonderful, wonderful resources. But again, just um, wanting to be more a part of a community. And so I would never shy away from anyone that um, reaches out to me in any way or um, if I reach out to someone and they can guide me or direct me, I would be ever so grateful. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Honestly, it's been, it is really is an honor for us. Uh, and I know Brother Munir and Asada Hosa, uh, we all feel that it's an honor to be able to support you and welcome you. And, and, um, and you already are, mashallah, contributing just by sharing your story and it sounds like you you just want to be part of the community and give back mashallah may Allah reward you for all of that Alhamdulillah. and again thank you so much for sharing uh, your story inshallah it'll be a benefit and um, and with the, for others inshallah okay thank you so much sister heather thank you it's a pleasure alhamdulillah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh you are here uh for this momentous uh event this incredible moment in your life that i hope you will cherish forever and remember forever and i just i'm so humbled to be a part of it uh, uh, with you, uh, you know, you, you've met Munir and Edla and um, Aisha as well, and mashallah, they're amazing people, and I'm sure they've already maybe even laid out the process for you, but just for the sake of, you know, um, making this as, as efficient as possible, I'll just quickly summarize. Um, I'm sure you know as well, the Shahada process is really easy, like mashallah, to come into Islam, it's so, it just takes a sincere heart and a few words, and that's it. I mean, and we believe honestly though that by the fact that you're here you're already part of this uh, family of muslims you're already our sister this is just a formal process to officiate it but uh, I, I feel that just subhanallah as soon as i came into the room and i saw your beaming smile i felt that from you uh so um the actual process uh, that, that we do is basically i'll just be reciting the shahada in arabic and I'll go at a very slow pace so that you can repeat with me. Um, and then we'll say it in English. 
um, did, are you familiar with, with that? I'm sorry, because I, I usually get like all of this back sort of knowledge or, or context uh, beforehand, but this was a little bit uh, done a little differently, which is fine. But are you familiar with the Shahada? Do you, are, do you, are you, do you know how the phrase or the declaration um, is stated? Do you know it? You know yeah. what it means? Okay, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, beautiful. Okay, Alhamdulillah. And if you don't mind, just for um, uh, for us, uh, just to have, again, total transparency here, would you mind if I ask what your previous religious background, if any, what it, what it is or what it was? I appreciate the question. Um, mine is one of those um, journeys that I can summarize fairly easily, but was basically born of a situation where I was not planned. My Um, I never knew my biological father and my mother not having a whole lot of insight as to how the world works was without religion and was basically just thumbing her way through life to the best of her ability, made a lot of mistakes. And so in short, fast forward to 20 years, she gave birth to my youngest sister. I was nearly 20 years older then. And, um, when my sister was just one month shy of her 16th birthday, she died from an epileptic seizure that, oh, did I lose you? No, no, I am here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all, of the, all of a sudden, I was just seeing myself. Um, so in short, that moment caused a real imbalance in my life, and I was on the quest to find answers because she was the dearest person to me. I had never been so close or um, really been able to measure what love was until she was born and came into my life. So I ended up finding a Buddhist monastery, studied Buddhism, um, learned from some wonderful nuns and monks um, how to be more mentally disciplined and physically disciplined. And so really the first, if I could call it religion, um, <clears throat> that came into my life was Buddhism. And then sometime, maybe nearly a year later, um, my relative who um, was also affected uh, by my sister's passing had suggested I pray a Christian prayer. And so um, she gave me a book and I began to read and then I was inquisitive enough and read the Bible cover to cover. And Um, started attending Christian churches and eventually was baptized. Um, But further on down the road, I was really just sort of baffled how so many of the pieces didn't really fit. And I was still searching and I had kind of stumbled upon some, some verbiage about the Holy Quran. And I was curious, but I didn't really aspire to learn because I knew it was a different language and I just thought I hadn't yet been fully inspired until September this year when I had been really just kind of at the lowest point in my life for a very long while. I'm um, just empty, really depleted and feeling very defeated. And this bright light came into my life that just illuminated the beauty of all things that I think that were pressing in my heart, but that I hadn't really quite been able to piece together in terms of who Allah is and what Allah, what Allah does for us. And I was inspired to read the Quran. So I bought my first Quran, read from cover to cover, and I know now that this was the definitive intention for me. It just kind of took me a little longer road, maybe, um, and a whole lot of bumps and bruises along the way. But I see how I've arrived um, at least whole enough to really recognize what is true. And I am so genuinely grateful. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Aisha. That was such a beautiful testimony. I um wow, you've left me really speechless. Thank you for 
for sharing that. And I'm sorry because you probably are going to get this question so much uh, as more and more people learn of you coming into the faith. And I have to just prepare you for that. This will be the question that everybody wants to know. Like, what's your journey? Tell us your story. But what a beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you. It was, uh, mashallah. I mean, first of all, um, may God you know, bring you peace over your sister's passing. I pray that you are reunited with her in the best of places. She sounds like a lovely person. Um, uh, so I'm sorry that you uh, went through that. But the fact that, you know, she's, her passing led you to this path is is just uh, it's such an incredible, uh, you know, gift that she left you with, right? Even though she she left, she also left you this gift. So Alhamdulillah, you know, um, we always say that we all have different paths, but uh, the, the fact that we get here is what matters, right? The fact that you're here, even if it, you stumbled along the path, we've all stumbled. You know, some of us who were born into the faith, we've certainly stumbled a lot. But Alhamdulillah for God's mercy and the fact that uh, he awakens us, as you said so beautifully, you know, that you just felt, felt illuminated. And that really is what I think many of us who, who embrace this faith, whether we're again born into it or we come into it, it is coming out from a darkness, right, that we just suddenly realize this is what I need to hold on to because otherwise we're just floundering trying to find our way in this very, very complex world. So Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for sharing. Really beautiful. I, 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 I don't know if you're in local. Are you local in the in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area? I live in Concord. Oh my God, that's where I was raised. Like, oh wow, <laughs> my mom lives there. I was just there the other day. Oh, okay. I, sh- I hope to meet you. I would love to meet you. I would love to, you know, sit with you and spend some time with you. You're close. That's wonderful news. Um, yeah, I would love to get to know you more and, and hear more about your journey. You're so well spoken, such a great storyteller, mashallah, uh, Brother Munir. I, I'm sure you took note of of Sister Aisha. We may have to bring her on to the to the speaker circuit at MCC at some point, <laughs> inshallah. But no, you really are. You're a very, very uh, captivating storyteller. You had me uh, gripping, uh, you know, right from the beginning. So, um, mashallah, it's just such a such an honor. But thank you uh, for for all of that. And and just again, I feel like, mashallah, you know, you're already here, but let's, you know, if if, if you're ready, we can proceed and we can we can uh, um, go ahead and officiate this this beautiful moment, inshallah. So uh, the Shahada, as you know, you know it, it's very short. And typically some speakers or some people who officiate will do it one time or three times based on the preference. Are you comfortable with either or, or would you like to, the, the Prophet said when he would emphasize something, he would repeat it three times. And that's where that practice comes from. So I, I do prefer to do it three times just to kind of, you know, in, align ourselves with him. And also for us who are witnessing I think it's just really, um, it's always beautiful to say the Shahada with someone who's coming into the faith because we reaffirm our own faith in that moment as well. So if you're comfortable with that, we could do three. But if you want to just keep it simple, short and sweet, we can do one, two as well, whatever you prefer. I love the idea of three. (sighs) Alhamdulillah. Okay. I am so, again, honored and excited to be here. Bismillah. so we'll begin and I'll repeat it in Arabic and then we'll do the definition after the three full statements in Arabic, we'll do the English definition and then that will be it. So, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We first begin and say, <clears throat> Ash-hadu. Ash-hadu. So, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot to give you the instruction. So I will repeat, uh, I mean, I will say it and then you repeat immediately after me. So we'll start again, Bismillah. Ash-hadu. Ash-hadu. An, an, la ilaha, la ilaha, il Allah, il Allah, wa, wa, ashhadu, ashhadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Rasul Allah, Rasul Allah. Beautiful, mashallah. So that's one down. Two more. Ashhadu. Ashadu an an la ilaha la ilaha illallah illallah wa wa ashadu ashadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan rasul allah rasul allah mashallah ashadu ashadu 
أن أن لا إله لا إله إلا الله إلا الله وأشهد وأشهد أن أن محمدا محمدا رسول الله رسول الله ما شاء الله الله أكبر God is great Welcome to the faith Sister Aisha You are now a Muslim, although you were one even seconds ago, but you are, it is official. You are, alhamdulillah, part of this incredible ummah. Welcome. You are our sister in faith. Uh, your here uh, is, of course, the Shahada, which simply states that I bear witness that there is no God, but the one and only God, God. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. And that is all it takes for someone to come into the faith, of course, to feel it in the heart, to, to testify it in the heart and on the tongue. So alhamdulillah, welcome, welcome. I wish I could hug you. <laughs> alhamdulillah. And that's usually what we do. There's usually a line and we just, everybody crowds around and alhamdulillah, you have to kind of get through that. But a uh, really special moment. Jazakallah khairan for allowing us to be a part of it. Did you have any questions? Um, or Sister Edlin or Brother Munir, do you have any any announcements? Anything? Let's say I think it'd be good to bring them back into the conversation, inshallah. Anything to share, Aisha? How do you feel? Mashallah, that was really, really beautiful. Mashallah, thank you, Sister Aisha, to, for you know sharing your story with us. It was really um, moving, and you know, it's uh, you've been through so much, Mashallah, and may Allah continue to open doors and um, beautiful bring beautiful blessings into your life. I mean, and also, um, sister Jose, Jose, if you want to talk to her about like the, her slate being clean and duas being accepted, inshallah. Yes. Um, but anyway, thank you so much. And inshallah, like a brother Munir will be, or has already added you to my mailing, the yeah. mailing list that I send out. So, um, inshallah, I'll follow up with you about that because we have some stuff coming up inshallah. <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, Adeline, Aisha. <laughs> Mashallah, love it. <laughs> I love it. Brother Munir, did you have any uh, anything to, for, for Sister Aisha? Anything, any announcements? Inshallah, you said it all, Ostada, but uh, just, you just honored us, Sister um, Heather, by allowing us to be part of the special day. It was, a, it was just a special privilege to be part of your spiritual journey. You'll hear this again and again from uh, us because we live this, um, this, this saying that uh, this is a... This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. We're going to take it slowly. And we are here for you. Uh, we're running this with you. And um, and we're there to make it beautiful for you, as you are for us, to give you water, to give you Gatorade, to give you whatever you need to run this, <laughs> run this marathon with you. So that's that's what, what what it's all about. And so thank you for the thing. And Ustad Jose will say that, uh, you know, your slate is clean. It's yes. like the day you came out of your your mother's womb, you get to keep your good deeds. And because of your wonderful presence, I can tell you have a lot of that. <laughs> and uh, and thank you for sharing your story. Yet, by the way, very touching. Uh, it just reminded me of the old saying that God reserves his hardest uh, test for his strongest soldiers. And yeah. Amazing. So, alhamdulillah. And uh, and but please pray for us because you know we are all weighed down for well, by by baggage by things that we have to answer for and uh, the sins that we do. Uh, but your 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 prayers are very direct, very uh, go go direct to God right now. And <laughs> so that's why we have to selfishly ask for ourselves right now, which is it's a good, yeah alhamdulillah. So I'll let Ustada say things. Forgive me, Ustada, for no 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 not at all. Thank you so much. Thank you both for the those reminders. You know we do so many. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from, but mashallah. <laughs> that was like a, you know, like a drum roll, like someone. Just <laughs> <pushed them> up. <laughs> Is that what it's coming from one of you? I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> I have no idea where that's coming from. Do you know where it's coming from, Brother Munir? I'm checking all my tabs. I have a million tabs open right now. Sada Jose, I think it's yours because yeah, when I'm we were on mute, it was still coming. Oh my so. gosh, really? <laughs> yeah. I am so love. sorry. Fine. It's very beautiful. 
Yeah, I wish we. What 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 is what is this part of the commercial? (laughs) Ya Allah, you know I have a YouTube video up for the Qalam Institute. I'm so sorry, I had no idea it was on, (laughs) but the timing was so perfect. Yes, Subhanallah. (laughs) Oh my goodness, Alhamdulillah. Uh, There's no better words, of course, than the words of Allah. But Sister Aisha, as uh, my dear Sister Aisha and Brother Munir reminded, when you've come into Islam, we believe that you are as they said, like a newborn baby, you're sinless, all of your past good deeds uh, accrue, I mean, they, they they join you, and also your any sins or any or mistakes, any misdeeds you've made also get converted into hasanat or good deeds for you. So you basically have, uh, you know, abundance and a surplus of good deeds. To, to uh, And that's why we seek your du'as, because you are not only uh, in that beautiful, pure state, but you're also, your du'as are considered what we say, mustajab, which is there's a lot of power right now because you've come into this faith, you've made the ultimate sacrifice. And to come into Islam and as an adult, of course, uh, I was reminded earlier listening to our teacher, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, who's also a convert, he was saying that sometimes people forget that the all of the first generation were converts. Uh, the the Sahaba, the wives of the Prophet, they're all converts. So converts have an immense role in our faith and they have such a weightiness because they make the ultimate sacrifice. And so you join the ranks of all of those amazing, uh, incredible people, of course, and and here even with us, Sister Aisha, who's also a convert and who, t- who leads the convert care. And so many of our uh, members of our community are converts. Um, our teachers, uh, you know, the teacher that I just mentioned, um, I don't know if you're familiar with his work, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, but I think you would really appreciate. He has a book on Islam and Buddhism. Uh, he wrote a, a section uh, on, you know, uh, comparing the two faiths. And also, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Thomas Cleary, who was, uh, he wrote uh, many books on Buddhism. He's actually one of the great translators of the Buddhist tradition. He passed away, actually, I believe in August or July of this past year, unfortunately, but he um, he was also a Muslim. People don't know that about him. So there are so many people that you're going to meet who've had very similar paths. And Buddhism, subhanAllah, is one of those traditions similar to Christianity where people, it's it's like a doorway. It's, it's a stepping stone that they will, just with a little bit more uh, study, find their way to Islam. So I, I, I really um, was thinking of that as you were speaking, like subhanAllah, I'm not surprised, especially because you said you were a seeker and seekers... You know, Allah, like subhanAllah, pulls you because you're seeking the truth. And until you get to that truth, you're not satisfied. And that's why your journey is so beautiful, because it shows the sincerity of your heart. You went through loss and you started, you know, that inquiry. And that inquiry took you to these beautiful other traditions, which there are beauties, uh, beautiful truths and in, in, uh, in universal truths in all of these beautiful faiths. But alhamdulillah, you're here. <laughs> you're here with, uh, in Islam and uh that, of course, um, is such a gift. Islam really is a gift. And I, I would love to, again, um, speak to you further, inshallah, when you're you know, ready to come and join us in person. I have halakas that I do or like gatherings for women. Uh, the last Friday of every Thursday, you are always welcome. And if you ever come to, to MCC, I'm five minutes away. I would be honored to meet you, to give you a tour, to just spend some time with you. And maybe, um, inshallah, when when we are able to do that, we can provide some resources for you. I, I'm sure, actually, um, Sister Aisha already has that process ready because, mashallah, they're so good at, at helping, uh, the, you know, with the convert care program to make sure you have the resources you need. But I will happily share my information with you if you want to be in touch with me, any questions you have or any just to feel like. You know, I'm 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 now part of of something much bigger, and it is. It's a family, and I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm going on so long, but I love this community so much. Like MCC, Brother Munir knows this. I made I, I came from Southern California, and I made specific uh, dua that Allah grant me the ability to move close to MCC because I love these people so much, um, and you will feel the love and on this. And I've been a part of many communities. But uh, what you get from the MCC community is really, really special. So that's why I'm so happy you took your shahada with us and uh, that we will be honored with uh, with uh, seeing you and having you part of our community. So thank you. Uh, forgive me for going on so long, but any anything to share, any final uh, remarks from you? I genuinely feel so incredibly blessed as, as I realize that with the guidance of Allah, he is drawing me 
near to some extraordinarily wonderful people. All three of you have definitely um, a very special place in my heart, uh, not only because you have gone out of your way to be so accommodating to a very <laughs> um, uh, on the spot um, request, but I, I will tell you that I have really been praying to Allah for an opportunity to um, experience more of the Muslim community. And I feel like he has brought me closer to mm. some wonderful people. So I'm just so grateful. Thank you, each of you. Oh, that's so sweet. I can tell you that the feeling is very, very, very mutual. Uh, I'm so touched. Thank you uh, to, uh, for again requesting this last minute shahada. I, I felt like it was like the lottery, really, to have this subhanAllah on this blessed night. Uh, so thank you in this blessed sacred month of Rajab. I mean, there's just so many uh, wonderful gifts that you've given all of us. Um, and to reaffirm our own testimony of faith is always, as I said, such a blessing. So thank you. I look forward to being in touch with you. Um, and I thank Brother Munir for making that contact. He knows, he knows he's got that VIP. He can text me anytime he wants, but especially with these requests. So I jumped on the opportunity, but I'm so grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And may Allah make it easy for you. You know, as Brother Munir said, this is a marathon and there's going to be a lot. It, it, it's such a beautiful time. And I don't want to, you know, say any more than that. Just, just cherish it, relish it, enjoy it, take your time and just really grow in your love of, of your creator who's basically pulling you towards him inch by inch, inch by inch every day. And inshallah, may Allah surround you with beautiful people who hold you, who give you space, who, who, um, who, you know, really support you during this time. And, uh, and we just, we're, we're excited to have you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Giving you lots of hugs, virtual hugs. <laughs> I'm a hugger, so I hope you're okay with that because I will hug you at some point. <laughs> uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Definitely right. virtual hugs, lots of virtual hugs from our side too, <laughs> my side. Alhamdulillah. I yeah. can do a, a quick closing dua before we, yes, we head out. Okay. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asr inna al-insan la fi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiraka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira subhana rabbika rabbil a'izati ya ma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ya Allah, we ask that you bless our dear sister Aisha, increase her, draw her closer to you, provide for her from every which direction. Ya Allah, surround her and envelop her in your mercy and in your care and bring her guidance uh, every single day so that she can again benefit our community and we can benefit her. Alhamdulillah, thank you for bringing us together. Please bless MCC and the MCC community, Brother Munir, Sister Aisha, their families, all of their loved ones, everyone's loved ones. Ya Allah, please protect and preserve them all. Thank you for this wonderful gift alhamdulillah sister aisha joining our faith alhamdulillah thank you thank you thank you aisha have a wonderful e evening both of you aisha's <laughs> have a wonderful evening brother manir as well inshallah we will see you soon inshallah assalamualaikum take care take care